How does knowing our own story make us a better storyteller? That's a big question. That's a great question because that's at the core of everything. Let's say, Karen, you have an autobiographical story, a story you want to tell. Um, and a couple of things, a couple of things are very clear. One thing I mentioned earlier is it's already written. So the question is how to tell the story, not what the story is, but how do I tell it? Another thing that's very, very clear getting in terms of writing and getting in terms of how this process will influence your writing of anything is the protagonist. The protagonist in your story is you. And let's say it's a story when you were 15 years old and a date you had or something like that, whatever it is. I can see you trying to remember one. Yeah, which one? No, <laughs> which I was one? sitting which home one? alone waiting by the phone. That's what it was. <laughs> okay, it's, okay, it's a story of you sitting home and that's fine. Now, you, but you're the protagonist of the story, of any story. Now the question is, when you think about, we talk to writers about the stories that they're creating and writing. How well do they know the protagonist? Now this is often a problem um, with a lot of the people who teach screenwriting or storytelling. You know, how well do you know the protagonist? How well do you even know your own characters? But now we're back to autobiographical. The protagonist is you. You should know you pretty well. In fact, you should know the other people around you, family and friends or whoever else is in that story pretty well. This is good. This is really good. But the question is, your protagonist, how well, let's say at 15, how well do you know the 15-year-old Karen? How well do you know what she was really thinking, really feeling, really wanting, really desiring, really expecting, really fearing at that time? You know what you did, you know about sitting at the phone, you know that the phone didn't ring or it did ring and it wasn't, wasn't for you, it was for somebody else or whatever it was. You know what the, the, you know what the events of the story are, but here's something that's really important. The events of your story, Karen, about sitting home waiting by the phone, those events and what happened is not the story. Those are the events of the story. That's the plot or that's the storyline, but it's not the story. The story is what happens inside 15-year-old Karen. What is going on inside this young woman sitting there by the phone? What is really going on? What is she hoping for? What is she fearing? Who is she fearing that might call? Who is she hoping that might call? That's what we need to know. That's the story. So the story exists inside the protagonist, not around the protagonist. Now all the events around the protagonist that happen actually trigger what's going on inside. Or what's going on inside is a reaction to what's going on on the outside. So we need both, but the events are not the story. The inner world of 15-year-old Karen, that is the story. So now in this process, and now right now on camera, I'm going to invite you to come take, you and David to come take a Write Your Life workshop as our guests. See, that's on tape. <laughs> so right now, the process is, Karen, you have to look at 15-year-old Karen as a character and go, who is she? What's really going on? And then once you can determine, I know what was going on, I remember this is what was going on, this is going on. Now, and you have all of that that was going on during this event. Now the next question is, how do I relate that to the audience? How do I let the audience know that there's that one guy, Charlie, and I'm hoping he won't call because he did threaten to call. And I'm hoping because if he calls and I answer the phone, I'm in trouble because I don't know if I have the courage to say no to him. And I don't want, I'm just making this up. How are you going to let the audience know that? Because if the audience doesn't know that, if the audience, in fact, doesn't know what's going on inside you, they don't get the story. All they get is events and they go, fine, you're sitting at home and then you're worried and I'm, you can say, I was worried and all that, which gets us to the two narrators in a second here. But, but that's, so learning how to, for the writers to go through the process of exploring, excavating, pulling apart, looking at all the elements of a story that they know better than anybody else. 
and exploring really what was going on for them and for all the people around them and then to try to understand the other parent, the parents, the, the brothers and sisters or whoever the other characters are, understanding them and how can I render them true to who they are, that's what makes a difference in all the other writing. Because we say, what Elsha and I say to people who have taken the right to your life, especially writers and directors, and we say, okay, now, you see how deeply you have gone into your character and all the other characters? They go, yeah, yeah. You have to do that for every character and everything you direct and everything you write. That's what you have to do. And now the bar is really high. But now they understand. I have to understand my protagonist in my fictional movie as well as I understand me. But you can't do that until you've gone through a process of, un of understanding you. Well, you just triggered a memory, and that was I wasn't 15, but the age 15 came up. And that was being home, and there was a knock at the apartment door. My mom wasn't home. I wasn't 15. I was younger. And it was, quote, the paper boy coming to collect. And I said, well, uh, and I was stammering. He goes, if you're 15, I'll take you out. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> thinking, wow, like, like that's he doesn't even know who I am on the other side. You know, I could see him because, yeah. but but it was I can still see that because it was I don't think I was even twelve yet, and he didn't know wow. that. I, I sounded older than I was, but just the fact that somebody's coming to collect for the paper and he's already trying to like you know hustle up a date or something. It's just kind mm -hmm. of funny. But so you reminded me of that because he Check mentioned the, if you're 15, because he said, I'm 15. I'm 15. So. If you're 15, I'll take you out, <laughs> even though I can't see you. Right. And I'm here just to, I'm a paper boy. I'm here to collect for your, for your paper. But anyway, but so, so going into that just mm -hmm. reminds me. So there you go. There's part of a story. No, that's a good story. That's a good story. And on the surface, like many, most stories, we go, oh, that's cute. It was kind of creepy at the time. Yeah, yeah but, no, yeah. but it was creepy to you, Karen. Right, right. To, to the rest of the world, you say, you know, there I am, and he says, you're 15, I'll take it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. What we do, once we start to hear what's going on inside you, you know, that feeling like, ooh, it's this, you know, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Or feel, oh, that's what we want to hear. That's what, that's the richness. That's the core of, that's the gold of the story is what's going on inside that little 12 year old right. at that moment. Who's home alone. Who's home alone. And the paper boy is, is coming to collect. Yep. <laughs> it's a great story. Thank you. I can still see it. <laughs>